In the past, I've made a few air-powered projects using 3D printed compressed air engines. And I've also made a few electric bikes. But I think it's about time that I combine the two. Yep, I'm going to be making an air-powered bike. The plan is to use a pneumatic cylinder, which will be mounted inside of the bike frame. This will convert compressed air into a linear motion. This linear motion can then be converted to rotational motion, which will drive the rear wheel. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, but more on that later. Let's go make a cab model. To make the cab model, I have to take a couple of photos of the bike frame from different angles. These photos can then be imported into Fusion 360 CAD software and adjusted to scale. I can then use these images to trace the angles and lengths of the frame tubes. Fortunately, the bike that I'm using has a pretty basic frame design, so all the tubes have constant diameter along their lengths. And now we have a pretty basic model of the bike frame. I then modelled the pneumatic cylinder, and after positioning it within the bike frame, I was glad I hadn't ordered anything larger. It then took quite a bit of work to configure the design to the point where everything would fit. The pneumatic cylinder had to be mounted at the perfect distance from the crank axle, so that the piston wouldn't hit the end of the cylinder at either end of the stroke. And the position of the main drive sprocket had to be perfect, so the chain wouldn't hit the rear frame tubes when driving the rear wheel. When I was happy with the design, it was time to CNC cut all of the parts. and 3D print the frame clamps, which I used PLA plastic filament supplied to me from my filament sponsor, 3D Prints UK. Once all the parts were ready and the necessary hardware had arrived, it was time to check if my design would fit to the bike. Then the bearings for the crankshaft were added, which will be used to support the shaft designed to connect the pneumatic cylinder, to the drive sprocket. The crank offset was then attached, which will be used to convert the linear motion of the pneumatic cylinder into rotational motion for the drive sprocket. And now for the important part, the pneumatic cylinder, which seemed to fit within the frame perfectly, as per my design. The next most important part, or possibly the most important part, the chain. Also, I can't resist mentioning how perfect this chain length is. I was expecting to need a chain tensioner, but fortunately the drive sprocket position was so perfect that both the chain from the pedals and the chain from the crank were almost perfectly tensioned. Then came the ridiculous task of mounting the huge air tank. To control the airflow from the tank to the pneumatic cylinder, there must be an arrangement of valves. I've chosen to use electronically controlled solenoid valves for several reasons. The main reasons being simplicity and cost. If I were to design and machine mechanically operated valves, the time required to build this bike would be far greater and still give me the same end result. And because I have no idea what that end result will be, I'd rather keep the input effort to a minimum. Not only that, but electronically controlled valves will give me the opportunity to optimise the bike at a later date, as I would like to program the valves to open for different lengths of time depending on the supply pressure hopefully resulting in the exhaust pressure being as close to atmospheric pressure as possible for maximum efficiency. I then mounted the valves as close to the cylinder inlets as possible using flexible rubber hose to allow for the movement of the cylinder during its cycle.
A quick pressure test of the plumbing was successful and connecting a battery up to one of the valves definitely got me excited to get this bike running. So I finished installing all of the electronics and also the plumbing for the valve system. Uh, there's a the four valves up here which are controlled electronically from the Arduino which is in the back here. Uh, there's a relay system which will apply voltage to these and that uh, opens the valves to let air in or exhaust air out. Now the way that the Arduino knows when to time these valves, I have an infrared beam sensor down here which basically counts how many uh, teeth of the sprocket pass through it. This way it can work out the angle uh, of the uh, crank and therefore know when to open or close them. There's also a switch down here which is like a zeroing switch. Uh, so when the switch is pressed the Arduino knows that is zero angle on the crank and then it can therefore count round uh, to 360, reset to zero, count round to 360, reset to zero. Uh, so that it never loses its position and the valve timing goes out of sync. So what I'm going to do is, uh, well first of all, plug in the air supply. I've uh, made a very simple code for this at the moment, which will just have uh, the air inlet open for one side and then the air inlet open for the other side. There's no special uh, variable valve timing yet. Um, so we'll just give this a quick test to see if we can get the wheel spinning. So if I plug this, actually I need to turn the electronics on first. So plug in the battery and then plug in the air supply. Right, so we've got about, only about 28 PSI right now, not very much pressure, but let's see if this will be able to uh, get it going. So what I need to do to start the bike is I need to just rotate the wheel around slightly so that the uh, homing switch is pressed and then I hold the throttle which is a like a thumb throttle here. If I put that to max and then give it a tiny push Oh my god, it's working! <laughs> Does it keep rubbing on something? Oh, it's... Right, so now if I let go of the throttle, it should stop. <laughs> I think the wheel is rubbing on there. Is it rubbing? I'm so happy, right. I think we need to go and do some proper tests. <laughs> that was so cool. Right, so I gave the bike a quick test on the grass last night. Uh, it was a bit dark and it was raining, so I didn't film it. Uh, but I can tell you that nothing happened. <laughs> uh, the sprocket that was on here was a 42 sprocket, and I just don't think it was creating enough torque to the rear wheel, so it couldn't push me along. I'm not sure whether this is still going to be enough. This is a 22, so theoretically we'll double the amount of torque. But I am testing on grass currently. If it can push me on grass, then it can definitely push me on the tarmac. But I want to test it just quickly here before I go out onto the tarmac. So I'm going to regulate the pressure to 50 psi currently. There's 80 psi in the tank, 50 psi through the regulator. And try and get my leg over this. Oh. Probably not a good thing to kick the valves. <laughs> right, so put the throttle on and give it a small push to click that switch. Yeah, it's not really got much power on the grass. I can feel it pushing me. There we go. Okay, it's struggling a bit on the grass. I think uh, I think it's time to go test it on some tarmac. Right, so I'm here at the flattest, uh, quietest road I could find. Uh, I've got 100 psi in the tank. I'm probably going to regulate that down to about 50, um, and then we'll give it a spin. If I can get my foot over. Right, 
So give it a small push just to get it started and then There we go. Come on. <laughs> it's pushing me. Not very quick. Looking out for traffic. Oh, <laughs> it's actually quite hard to balance with this massive tank on the back. I regulate the pressure up to 55. Let's try 55. All right, here we go. Next time round, I'll click the throttle on and give it one push to get up to speed. It's accelerating now. <laughs> okay, I'm into the wind as well right now. So if I get up to speed a little bit, like that, then I can just take my feet off. I'm going to pedal just to get up to a bit more speed, just to see how it works at speed. <laughs> it works it's just not very powerful i'm not sure if this is exactly road legal i would assume it is because otherwise police would be pulling over cyclists for uh, releasing some other kind of gas out the the backside give it one more run i've only got 40 psi so i doubt this is going to do much but might as well use all the air i have I thought I was a right weirdo. <laughs> Sometimes the timing goes out. I think that's due to the infrared, uh, the infrared beam sensor. So I should probably use some kind of proper encoder at some point. But that works pretty well. I've run out of air pressure, so I'm going to have to go back uh, to my shed and fire up the compressor. <laughs> I'm happy with that though. I am very happy with that. I can't say I'm not. Yeah, 25 PSI and it was pretty much dead. Now that was a good first test, but there's definitely a lot of improvements to be made on this bike. But first, I would like to thank the sponsor that made this project possible. Most of my projects, such as this air-powered bike, require knowledge of CAD design, 3D printing, Arduino coding, electronics, and more. But most of the time when I'm working on these projects, I don't have the time to put together tutorials. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, Arduino coding, and more. 
A premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts in their fields so that you can use these classes to expand your skills and open more opportunities. Instead of browsing the internet for hours looking for tutorials, Skillshare have a whole wide range of tutorials all on one site. And it's also one of the most affordable learning platforms out there with an annual subscription working out at $10 per month. If you're interested in Skillshare, then check out the link in the description below. The first 500 people that sign up will get a two month free trial and will also help support my channel. So thanks very much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And if you want to support my channel, check out the Skillshare link in the description below. And let's get back to the bike. So this bike has taken about four weeks to design and build. Uh, and therefore this isn't the end of this project. Think of this video as more of like a part one project video. Uh, I would like to do a follow up video where I go into depth of like how to optimize this bike because that first test was, although it worked, it was far from the performance I'd hoped for. Uh, there's a few modifications I need to make in terms of mechanically to this section down here. Uh, the current crankshaft through here can't survive more than 80 PSI. I did a pressure test uh, before I completed the build of this bike and I managed to snap this axle uh, at about 80 PSI, which is why I didn't uh, run that test above 60 PSI. I also want to make a lot of changes to the valve timing. Uh, if you watch back the GoPro footage, which was the camera which was capturing this rotating round, uh, it was quite clear that the valve timing was quite a bit out. The air inlets would fire late or open late and then the exhaust valves would open early. So in terms of the actual angle that the cylinder was actually putting force onto the crank, it was, it was probably only about 60 degrees of the full potential 180 degrees it could pull or push. So there was a lot of energy lost in that cycle. Briefly during the build of the bike, I mentioned that I want to adjust the valve timing depending on the supply pressure from the tank. And what I meant by this is that I can basically calculate how much the volume of the cylinder will expand. Uh, so depending on the pressure, we'll let more air in or less air in so that once it's expanded, the end pressure of the air will be equal to the outside atmospheric air. And I think this is the best way or most efficient way, at least to transfer the energy from the air, because any pressure flowing out of the exhaust is wasted pressure. From that first test that I ran, you probably would have heard that the air pressure coming out of the exhaust was quite high. It sounded like a little air gun going off every time that the engine would cycle round. So if I can optimize this so the exhaust pressure is as low as possible, or as close to atmospheric pressure as possible, uh, then I think that will be the most efficient way to transfer the energy from the tank to the rear wheel. So yeah, there's a lot of improvements to do, but um, I'll be doing all of those improvements in a follow-up video. So if you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could leave a thumbs up. Uh, if you're new to my channel and want to follow this project, then please click subscribe down below. Uh, a huge, huge thanks to all of my Patreon supporters for supporting uh, my projects. Uh, and if you want to find out more like behind the scenes updates of these projects, I upload uh, videos occasionally on my Patreon page of what I'm up to. So it'd be great if you could check out the link in the description below uh, to my Patreon page. Thanks once again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.